Good afternoon. In this Tough Topics, we're going to be looking at global warming. Now, a lot of the discussion with Christians and global warming has revolved around whether or not global warming is a thing. Um, traditionally, with, with Christians saying that it's not a thing, and, um, you know, how these crazy liberals saying that it is a thing. But I want to put a slightly different view uh, up to debate. Instead of asking, is it real, we should be asking, does it really matter? As Christians, now I'm not saying it, the the issue of global warming is irrelevant. I'm saying, for the sake of what Christians can do about it, whether or not it is real, is not important. For a few reasons. First off, the world was entrusted to us in Genesis 1:28. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible, and it says this. It says. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. See, God gave us the job of taking care of the planet. And so instead of saying, hey, is it real? How about what can we do to help the environment? Well, how about don't burn plastic? Recycle if you can. Uh you know, throw away trash in a trash can rather than just throwing it on the floor. Don't litter, obviously, and those kinds of things. And all those, doing all those things doesn't really matter if global warming is real or not because you're helping the planet. <laughs> like, you're doing the thing that God actually told us to do. So, um, don't be afraid of, of it either or, regardless of whether uh, global warming is real or whether it's not real is irrelevant to what I'm saying here. Don't be afraid. In uh, Psalm 46, 1 through 3, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, th though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Now, how applicable is that to the issue of global warming? You know, there's a lot of things going on, you know, frogs dying out and um, places aren't getting rain like they should and some places are getting more rain than they should and just a lot of weird things going on and a lot of people are getting very scared about it. But in all these things, it's, remember, it's important to remember not to be afraid because no matter what happens in this life, this is not our eternal home. And I'm not just talking about um, the world, I'm talking about our bodies too. No matter how hard we try, it is passing away. I mean, even if we found a way to somehow stop dying, you know, to get rid of death, you know, like they say in the science fiction movies where you put your consciousness into like a robotic being or some nonsense like that. Even if we were able to do that, it's only going to last so long because everything is passing away. This earth is passing away. Our sun will eventually die. You know, things are passing away, but we don't have to be afraid of these things because God holds us. And when it's our time to die, we can trust that God will carry us to a greater glory than we have ever known. And that's really all I want to say today. So I guess the, the moral of the story is don't focus on proving or disproving um, global warming. Instead, try and take care of what God has given us. You know, um, for instance, atom bombs probably probably bad. Um Nuclear things, probably probably not great. Uh, <laughs> um, littering, probably not a great thing. Uh, buying a gas-guzzling car that you really don't need, probably not a great idea, especially since you know there is a limited supply of, of things on the Earth. And if we waste it all on, on things that we don't even need, <laughs> why would we do that? You know, so it, we should probably invest in things like, you know... Um, electric cars and those kinds of things or cars run by alternate fuel or something like that you know just throwing this out here because there are limited limited uh, supplies on the earth what i see a lot of people do especially in places like texas is, is you see a lot of people drive these really big trucks when they don't haul anything the dualies those trucks with the with the um, on the back wheel instead of one tire they have two tires on each side um, they're called i don't know what they're actually called but i call them dualies um they use a tremendous amount of gas and if you're not hauling things like horses, you know, steel, <laughs> rocks, it's, it's kind of hard to justify that. I mean, there's a lot of cars that just, 
that don't use so much gas. And here's here's the good news. When you buy a car that's that saves on gas, check it out. You have to pay less for gas, which means you can spend that money on something else. Like helping people in trouble. Like refugees. So everybody wins. So just kinda hope that that's a little bit of a challenge to you. Maybe not worry so much about proving or disproving um, global warming, but instead try and help the government since God tasked us to do that. So.